Good afternoon, Robert Scribbler. It is September 27th, 2018. Thank you for joining me for another climate change and clean energy video blog. Now for this segment, I am going to talk about the continued potential for a double hurricane strike over the next week or so for Japan as it relates to risks involving Typhoon Trammy which presently maintains winds in, in and around the 100 mile per hour maximum intensity range with gusts up to 140 miles an hour. A storm that is still dealing with a little bit of, of dry air in its center, which is causing the center to be, to be quite large and, and is tamping down some of the maximum intensity of this storm. However, the storm is moving over very warm waters, warmer than normal waters, and overall in a very moist environment. And according to forecasts, is likely to strike Japan, the southern sections of Japan, with maximum sustained wind intensities in the range of 95 to 115 miles per hour so as as a rel as a rather strong storm and a rather heavy rainstorm before tracking off to the north and east trammy is unfortunately expected to be followed on by a second storm developing from what is now 94 whiskey this system <clears throat> in some models is predicted to be quite intense <clears throat> excuse me, and to move along a track that is similar to Trami, impacting the southern section of Japan sometime by next week. I'm going to look at some models to show you the projected path and intensity of both of these storms. This is an HWRF model projection, a, a hurricane model showing Trammy's present location and projected location over the coming days. I'm just going to go ahead and run this model so you can see it. Trammy continues to move relatively slowly off to the north and west and is expected to make a, a bit of a recurve. Many models show Trammy strengthening a bit up to 100 mile, well, I'm sorry, 110, possibly 115 mile per hour or more maximum intensity as it begins to make its northward turn by Saturday. And over the next few days, I'm sorry, over the next 24 to 48 hours, it's supposed to recurve, gathering forward speed and, and many models showing increasing in intensity as it approaches the southern island of Japan by mid to late Saturday, approaching the coast of southern Japan on early Sunday as a 942 millibar storm. Over the following hours, Trami is expected to brush the southern section of Japan in this model before making landfall by mid to late Sunday. Storm is then expected to move on across most of central Japan before exiting the north central coast into the Pacific Ocean and tracking again off to the north and west following a brush with the northern island of Japan. This track will tend to bring impacts all along most of Japan's coastal region and into the central section with expected heavy rainfall for some regions in the range of 15 to 20 inches as well as expected strong coastal impacts from heavy, heavy waves, strong winds, and, and storm surge. Moving on to 94 Whiskey, which is presently just an area of disturbed weather that shows quite a bit of convection in the region east of the Philippines and also over warm to much warmer than normal waters. This storm is projected by some models to intensify quite rapidly into a major tropical cyclone, into a super typhoon, 
I'm just going to go ahead and run this GFS model to give you guys an, a, an idea of what's expected to happen. Now, as we can see, Trami is expected in the GFS model also to run over much of Japan, which would produce some rather significant impacts for a storm of its size and intensity. But look at 94 Whiskey here in the GFS model at a projected intensity of 908 millibars. Now, i just like to mention that the GFS model has shown a, a bit high intensity and is presently tracking about 10 millibars lower than present observations, 10 to 15 millibars lower. So something to consider as we look at this model going forward. So this, this is a snapshot of Monday, October 1st, and projections through Tuesday show a very severe 903 millibar storm lurking south of Japan. Uh, and then by early, early Wednesday, tracking off to the north, maintaining a rather severe intensity and, and continuing to note, note the rainfall, continuing to interact with moisture over Japan and spur shower and thunderstorm activity in advance of its projected landfall by late Friday. In the GFS model is a 916 millibar storm, which would be very damaging to the southern island of Japan should such an instance occur. And crossing over the southern island and into the Sea of Japan following a severe strike, at least in this model. I'd just like to note that there are projections starting to emerge of very severe rainfall, particularly for the southern island, due to the influence of both of these storm systems with an excess of 15 to 20 inches of rainfall projected from Trami and then a, a very large swath of, of extraordinarily extreme rainfall projected in the GFS accu accumulated precip precipitation model through late next week for the southern island of Japan. If this does emerge, it would be a, a very severe rainfall event over the course of, of about five days for this section of Japan. So not only a serious risk for storm damage when it comes to winds and storm surge and tidal flooding, but also a serious risk as it results as it relates to rainfall impacts. I'm just like to provide a little bit of context because human caused climate change has warmed sea surface temperatures considerably around Japan. And this warming of sea surface temperatures is a signature fingerprint of human caused climate change. It's also worth mentioning that atmospheric moisture levels around Japan have been very high throughout both summer and into early fall. And this has aided in spiking the intensity of extreme rainfall events, as well as worsening the intensity of heat waves by increasing heat index values or, or wet bulb temperature values. And this summer we had some very severe heat wave impacts over Japan. So a context of climate change with regards to both hurricane strikes, heavy rainfall, and overall ocean and atmospheric conditions, primarily warmer than normal sea surface temperatures and high atmospheric water vapor, vapor at present exasper exacerbating the risks from severe storms, but also showing a general trend of extreme weather related to climate change throughout summer and fall of 2018 for Japan. Thank you for joining me and I'll be chatting with you soon.